Yeah, so we have the convergence of our sequence Gn at the points xi and we have to improve this to convergence at all points and we also have to improve uh, pointwise to uniform convergence. Good, okay, so what we should do is we should maybe first try to look on the pointwise convergence everywhere. So we fix an arbitrary argument in 0 and 1 and we want to show uh, that gn of x converges and of course because we don't know what the limit should be uh, we, we will show that it is a Cauchy sequence. Uh, I mean our Banach space is complete so showing convergence can usually be done by checking the Cauchy property. Okay so we will do exactly this. We will show that the sequence gn of x Actually, this is not about our Banach space, this is just about uh, real numbers because gn of x is just a sequence of real numbers and of course r is complete. So we will show that gn of x is a Cauchy sequence. And then in the second step uh, we hope to improve this to a uniform uh, Cauchy sequence property. Good, but, l but let us start with this. And for this of course, okay, so we want to check that uh, this is a Cauchy sequence, so we should see that gn of x minus gm of x can be made as small as we want if we only make n and m big enough. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, and of course about x we don't know anything. We only know what our sequence g makes at the rational points. So of course we will compare or we will uh, we will do this estimate by going over to our knowledge at, at the rational points. So actually, we estimate this in a usual way by replacing gn at the point x with gn at the point xi, where xi is a rational point, which we still have to choose, but I mean, we are free to choose this one, but so we will do this. And then we use the, con the convergence at th those rational points, so in particular at this point xi, uh, for this sequence gn and then of course uh, we also compare the, the gm of x with the gm of xi. So we have gm of xi minus gm of x. Ah, okay, ah, so I ha just have written gn of x minus gm of x as here and then I have uh, added and subtracted the gn of xi and the gm uh, of xi oh, and then done this estimate. Good, uh, okay, so I mean I want to to get the Cauchy property at the point x by using that we have the Cauchy property at the point xi's. Okay, but of course we have to control this yeah, mistake we make by going over from x to xi, but this we can do, and we can do this in a, in a way which actually is independent of the indices here. Uh, so namely, uh, let's say we want to make all those terms smaller than epsilon, uh, so I mean we can estimate this smaller than epsilon, and in the same way this smaller than epsilon, uh, by just making the arguments x and xi x and xi close enough together. Uh, so namely we know that this is the case if we just choose an xi such that the distance between x and xi is smaller uh, than a delta. Uh, uh, so we know there exists a delta such that whenever this is the case this can be made less than epsilon and the equicontinuity tells us that this does not depend on n. So that's where we use, use the equicontinuity, namely we can estimate this distance here, smaller than epsilon, uh, only depending on how close the arguments are, but not what the n is here. Uh, so that's an important point here, so where this delta is really independent of n, of n because our sequence is equicontinuous. Uh, so I mean our original sequence, I mean the sequence we are looking at now is the sequence Gn and this is a subsequence of the original sequence uh, Fn and the original sequence is a sequence in the set A so it's, it's an equicontinuous sequence. Uh, so also the sequence Gn is equicontinuous uh, as a subsequence of Fn. 
So since our sequence Gn is uh, equicontinuous. Uh, so here we use the fact that the elements in our sequence are somehow tied together. Huh? They are not just, uh, cannot be chosen more or less independently. They really are governed by the same delta. Huh? And the same here. Huh? So I mean, it doesn't depend uh, on the index. So I mean, whether I have here n or m doesn't make a difference. Good. Okay. Now, of course, I, yeah, if I want this epsilon, this estimate by epsilon, or in, in the sum by three epsilon, uh, then this here gives, gives me a delta, which tells me how close I should choose the xi to x. And of course, I find rational numbers uh, which are close, as close as I want to any given x. Huh? So I mean, I, I can choose an xi here, huh? because I mean, I'm free here to choose the xi, because it doesn't show up on this side. Okay, and then for this chosen xi, I can now use the fact that at this argument xi, uh, my sequence converges, so in particular it's a Cauchy sequence. Uh, so for this xi, which I'm given from here, so I for this here I fix the xi, I choose one xi, uh, which gives me those two estimates, and then with this fixed one, uh, so I fix this with the property that x minus xi is smaller than delta, with the delta which I get from here, and then I know, because at this point xi, my sequence converges, it's a Cauchy sequence, so if I only make the n and the m big enough, uh, then I can also make this smaller than epsilon. Uh, so then this difference here is smaller than epsilon uh, for all n and m bigger than some capital N. Uh, so there exists a capital N such that whenever n and m are bigger than this, this here is smaller than epsilon. Uh, that's a Cauchy property of the sequence Gn of xi. Yeah, uh, okay, and so this is because we know at the rational numbers, so in particular at this point xi, of course, I'm choosing here the xi in q, uh, I know yeah, that this converges since gn at the point xi converges. Uh, so that's the points from my enumeration of the rational numbers in the interval uh, 0 to 1. Yeah, okay, but then this tells me, uh, yeah, for a given epsilon, okay, there is a delta, and then for this delta, there is a capital N such that, so there is a capital N such that if I chose N and M bigger, then uh, this is smaller than 3 epsilon. And this is exactly the Cauchy sequence. So this is a Cauchy, the Cauchy property. So this is a Cauchy sequence, and this tells me that Gn of x, uh, this sequence converges. Okay, and this argument is valid for any x. Uh, so this means, point-wise, we have now seen that my uh, sequence, Gn, converges, point-wise. Good, but what we want, of course, is uniform convergence. Uh, I mean, if we say we have a, a sequence in our Banach space, there should be a convergence subsequence. Of course, uh, the notion of convergence in our Banach space of continuous functions is the uniform convergence, uh, corresponding to the, the subnorm. Uh, so what we want is uniform convergence, and this means that the estimate, which we have done here, should not depend on x. Uh, so I mean, we should find here a capital N, which does not depend on x. But of course, uh, this is not in this way, this is not given because, uh, I mean, I have chosen here an, an xi and the choice of the n here depends, of course, on the xi uh, because this is the Cauchy property for the sequence at the argument xi. So this is Cauchy sequence, so there exists an n, but this n, of course, depends on the chosen xi. Uh, okay, so this means we still have to work more to get uniform convergence. We have to improve somehow the argument here. Uh, so in order to get uniform convergence, uh, yeah, the n which we get here should be independent uh, of, of, of the xi. But in this form, so this here uh, depends on the chosen xi. Good. Okay, but again, maybe it's... Uh, yeah, so we, we have to make here choices, and a priori, maybe because we just want to find, find rational numbers which are close to our given x's, uh, we might have to make infinitely many choices, and then, of course, we have infinitely many n 
ends and then of course uh, we don't know what to do. But again, the p point is maybe we can, uh, yeah, can do the thing with only having to invoke finitely many xi. Uh, and of course, you see what we need here. If I'm choosing the epsilon, then I get the delta. And then for the xi, I only have to make a choice such, such that the xi is closer than this delta to my x. So this means if I somehow uh, take only x's, yeah, if, if I take a supply of rational numbers such that I can be sure that uh, any number in the interval 0 to 1 is closer than delta to one of those xi's, then I only have to consider those finitely many. Uh, and of course, uh, this is quite easy because I can just take, uh, I decompose the interval 0 to 1 or cover it by small intervals over lengths uh, delta uh, with rational numbers. Okay, so, so maybe more precisely. So what I want is a, is, is a finite number of xi's which I have to invoke in this argument here. So may maybe let me write this down. So however, so if we have a finite number of xi, uh, so I mean the i's are now indexed by an index set, uh, which is finite. Uh, uh, to choose from, here in this argument, uh, then we have only finitely many n's, finitely many n's, which are now called ni. Uh, so the n corresponding to xi, I denote by ni. Uh, uh, yeah, so then I have only finitely many uh, ni. And then, of course, uh, yeah, I can take an n such that this is always true independent of of the x which I con consider by just taking the maximum of all the ni's which, which show up here. Huh? And we can take the same n for all x's, namely by taking for the n just the maximum of those finitely many ni's which are involved in this argument. So the maximum over i and i of all the ni's. Uh, and this n works then for all, for all x. Uh, because for each x, I find an xi, uh, for which I can make this argument here. And then for the corresponding ni, if, if n and m is bigger than the ni, uh, then this works. And of course, if it is bigger than the capital N, then it is bigger than any ni which, which might show up here. Uh, Okay, so for all, for all x. Yeah, okay, but of course, it is very easy uh, to see that, of course, this can be achieved. So namely, what we need is we need finitely many xi's such that for each x in the interval 0 to 1, we, fi we have at least one of those xi's which are closer than a given, than a given delta. Uh, so we need finitely many xi, rational numbers, of course, uh, such that for each x in this unit interval from 0 to 1, we have at least one of those finite supply of xi's such that the distance between x and xi is less than delta. So with uh, xi with x minus xi is less than delta for a fixed delta. I mean for each delta we need this. Huh? We have to do, I mean we have to do this argument for any epsilon, and for the epsilons we find a delta, and then we have to do those arguments. Oh, okay, but so if epsilon is fixed, then there will be a, a fixed delta, and for this delta we need finitely many xi with, thi with this property. Yeah, okay, but this of course is easy. Uh, for this we just uh, can take multiples of essentially uh, 
anything which is smaller than delta. Huh? So just take a rational number, which is between 0 and delta. I mean, delta itself might not be a rational number. Huh? In principle, we, we would take delta, uh, but we need something rational. So we take just a, a rational number which is smaller than delta. Uh, so we take something which is, let's say, between 0 and delta. And for the xi's, we take then just uh, multiples of this r. Huh? So we just take uh, r, 2r, 3r and so on until we have covered, we have reached the end of the unit interval. Huh? So essentially we take 1 over r times r, but here we take the integer part of this. Huh? So, so we just decompose the interval 0 to 1 into small intervals where here we have r, 2r, 3r and so on up to and here uh, until we reach the end. And of course, we only need finitely many of those guys. Huh? With finitely many points, we have here rational numbers such that any number in the interval 0 to 1 is closer uh, than delta to at least one of those guys. Huh? And then in this argument, we can use the corresponding xi. And then we get that this estimate here is actually uh, true in a uniform way for all x's. Huh? So. Yeah, maybe that's the final conclusion here. Let's make a bit of space for this. So what we achieve in the end from putting all this together is that for any epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a capital N natural number uh, such that the distance between Gn of x and Gm of x is less than 3 epsilon for all x in the interval 0 to 1 and for all n and m bigger than capital N. Huh? And so that that's the Cauchy property in a uniform norm. Huh? So I mean, uh, we find a capital N, so that's starting from this point on, if the indi indices are bigger, the distance between this is more is less than uh, 3 epsilon for all x. Huh? The capital N does not depend on x. Huh? So actually the, the, the uniform, uh, the distance in a subnorm between Gn and Gm is actually smaller than 3 epsilon. Okay, May maybe I should also write it this way. So this here really means that the difference in the subnorm between Gn and Gm is less than 3 epsilon whenever n and m is bigger than capital N. Uh, and this means that Gn is a, is, a Cauchy for, is, is a Cauchy sequence with respect to our norm convergence, and this means it converges uniformly. Uh, so this means Gn really converges uniformly uh, to the limit which we have seen exists uh, for each x. Good. Uh, okay, so may maybe the argument again. So for any epsilon bigger than zero, I'm choosing epsilon bigger than zero. Uh, then I go to here. So I have here this epsilon. And then I know uh, for this epsilon, there is a delta such that I have this, and this is by the equicontinuity of my family. Okay, then I have the delta, and then with this delta, I can choose those finitely many xi's, which cover this, and then uh, I can also do this argument here, um, yeah, by choosing one of the xi's, which is close enough, uh, and then I get here, of course, an n, which depends on the xi, but I have only finitely many of those I xi's for which, which I have to consider. So I just uh, choose um, the maximum of all those ni's. And then I have my capital N, which I need here. If I then take N and M bigger than this capital N, the maximum of all the ni's which are involved here for the xi's which are relevant, then I get this estimate here uh, exactly as I have written it down here. And this is independent of x now. 
yeah, and then I have the uniform convergence, and thus I have shown that any uh, set which is closed, bounded, and equicontinuous, uh, yeah, if I consider a sequence in this set, then it converges uniformly. Okay, compactness also asks that the limit is belongs to the set, but of course uh, I have uh, my set is closed, so the limit belongs to this. Huh? So that, that's what I, I read, what I need close, closed for, that the limit belongs to the set. Huh? So this is only used at the end. Huh? Okay, of course, I mean, bounded and equicontinuous are really the, the main properties which really enforce the, the convergence of a subsequence. Closeness then enforces that the limit belongs to the set. Good, okay, and this is yeah, the proof, beautiful proof of of this beautiful theorem of Asela Ascoli.